Hello everyone and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Expense Mobile App for Dynamics 365 Project Operations. My name is Lalita and I'll be your moderator today. If you have questions for our presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the event and in a live segment after the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Martin Walker, Principal Solution Architect, Mukesh Mutraja, Senior Program Manager, Rama Pamaktam, Program Manager, Sadish Panvo, Senior Program Manager. Sadish, over to you to get started. Thanks, Lalita. Hello and welcome everyone to our tech talk on Expense Mobile for Dynamics 365 Project Operations. We are excited to announce and introduce you to the new mobile app. As part of this tech talk, our objective is to introduce you to the new Expense mobile app. Please know that the Expense mobile app is available only for resource, non-stock deployment and stock or production-based deployments. The app is not relevant to the light deployments of project operations. As part of this tech talk, we do not plan to cover detailed setup configurations of expense management module and Dynamics 365 Finance. We have covered this in our previous tech talk and link for that tech talk is provided in the resources section towards the end of this presentation. From an agenda perspective, for today's tech talk, we will provide a quick overview, high level steps required to set up and configure the expense mobile app, followed by a quick demonstration and Q&A. With that, Let's get going. You're probably quite familiar already with this diagram that shows the three deployment types as well as the components that are part of each one. As mentioned in the beginning, we won't be going into details, but it is worth reminding everyone that the light version of project operations make use of data hours only and wraps up the project for the web engine for scheduling management. The stock-based scenario deployment type is targeting project management and accounting only and it is available as a module in the Finance and Operations app. Finally, the resource non-stock based scenario is cross-platform with both Dataverse and Finance and Operations communicating through dual right. Let's look at high-level architecture for Expense Mobile app. The Expense Mobile app is installed in the Dataverse environment, which is connected to your Dynamics 365 Finance environment. The expense management module is used to control the behavior of expense mobile app. The OCR add-in is required to scan the receipts and capture the information that can be saved on expenses and eventually be used on the expense reports and kind of form the entire basis of the expenses. Expense mobile app solution was developed to make expense reporting more efficient and user-friendly for users and allowing them to manage their expenses on the go. It overall helps accelerate the reimbursement process for the employees and increase overall user productivity. The app includes a variety of features to make expense reporting as seamless as possible, such as the ability to create expenses and expense reports, OCR receipt pictures, and attach existing receipts. The app also includes the ability to save, submit, and recall expense reports, leveraging pre-configured web automation workflow to streamline the entire process. Additionally, the app allows team to leverage pre-configured web expense policies for compliance and oversight. For example, user must attach a receipt while submitting the expenses beyond a certain amount. These expense policies currently works on the web application and on a go-forward basis, now these expense policies will also work on the mobile app as well. Know that Expense Mobile App is a front-end to the existing expense management module. From a status perspective, the Expense Mobile App is currently in public preview and is planned to be GA'd in September 2023. We have provided the list of features that you should be able to validate in your environment as part of public preview. At the time of GA, additional capabilities will be available in the mobile app, including mileage-based expenses, per diem for employees, itemization of expenses, approval and rejections of expense reports. For project-based organizations, we are also looking to streamline the process of defaulting project details on multiple expense lines so that users don't have to enter project-related details 
on individual expense lines. During the development of this app, the focus was not only on building rich functional requirements, but also to deliver the overall user experience from performance and reliability perspective. Customers and partners have provided feedback as the app was being built. And we have heard it from customers and partners that the app should have high performance. So users don't experience a lag when they take an action on mobile app and when that action is completed. The users, when they are taking the actions, those in, that information should be synchronized correctly with the web application. The users have an option to use the mobile app as well as web app for certain actions in case if they want to do so. For example, your organization may just leverage the expense mobile app for capturing the receipts and then users are more comfortable on the web UI uh, to kind of complete their expense report. So either they can they can take this out or they can do their complete expenses on the web or they can do their complete expenses on the expense mobile app as well. In addition, there are a lot of requirements that came from the customer partners uh, that the app should be extendable so, because they have or they would like to build additional extensions on top of the expense management. The expense mobile app can be customized to the specific needs of your organization. And from a design perspective, the design follows the intuitive design so users are able to read the text correctly. Users can be able to view the pictures and view the receipts correctly as well. Dynamics 365 Expense Mobile app is developed using Canvas Power App. Users can access it from Power App's mobile app by logging in and using their corporate credentials. This is supported in both iOS and Android devices. Users also have capability to pin the application to their home screen for quick access to the app. The Expense Mobile app uses key configurations from Dynamics 365 Finance to ensure a seamless and consistent experience between the mobile app and the web application. Those configurations include policy configurations, workflow configurations, and visibility of expense report fields. The Expense Mobile app is controlled through feature Use Expense Mobile application for intuitive expense entry experience that should be enabled in feature management before you can start using the app. The feature is available in version 10.034 or later and latest quality update must be installed. You must also have a fully implemented setup of expense management module in your environment and OCR add-in must be installed from LCS. From a licensing perspective, there are no additional licensing costs for the new expense mobile app its license is covered under the team member license. Users who have a team member license can use the app. The Expense Mobile is available in all regions where Dynamics 365 project operations is available. Know that the Expense Mobile app does not support offline mode currently. Next, let's look at how, what are the high level steps for uh, setting up the Expense Mobile app. To install the Expense Mobile app, your Dynamics 365 environment must be linked with a Dataverse environment and Dynamics 365 apps must be enabled. If Dataverse is not already set up for your environment, you must set one up and remember to enable Dynamics 365 apps. The Expense mobile app is installed in your Dataverse environment to enable users to access it when they sign in by using the Power Apps mobile app. It can be installed from App Source and link is provided in the resources section. Once installation is complete, Dynamics 365 Expense Mobile is listed as a solution on the Solutions tab in Power Apps. The Expense Mobile app uses the Expense Core Service Connector, which is a Power Apps custom connector for all its interactions with Dataverse. It requires the app registration in Azure Active Directory and then connector configuration using details of the registered app. After the mobile app solution is installed in your Dataverse environment, you must share it with your users. To share the app, you, you can follow the instructions that you use to share a Canvas app 
uh, within your organization. Each relevant user must be assigned a basic user security role that let them create a connection to the custom connector. You can assign this role to a Dataverse group team. Then any user who is a member of the team also has the role. Alternatively, you can also assign the role directly to the users. We recommend that you use group teams if you must assign the role to multiple users. This concludes the setup configuration that are required on the Dataverse environment. Next, we will discuss how users can install and access the app on their mobile devices. Users can install the Power Apps mobile app from App Store. Once installed, they can open the Power Apps mobile app and sign in by using the same corporate account that you use to sign into Dynamics 365 Finance. Use the search field to search for Expense Mobile. Because the Expense Mobile app is a Canvas app, you can add it in your favorite list in Power Apps by just swiping left after you find it. Open the Expense Mobile app and start to use it. Next, let's take a look at the demo to show the Expense Mobile app in action. Expense Mobile is a Power App, so we launch it from our Power Apps player. So once we do that, uh, we should see our published apps, including any we might have favorited as I have here. You can see our Expense Mobile app comes up and we have any expenses that have been imported, say from a credit card feed. We have any receipts that we've already captured, either from the web UI or from our Expense Mobile and any expense reports. So there we have some expense reports. So let's add a new one from a uh, from, from from a receipt that we have just uh, captured, that we're just capturing in a restaurant. So you can see there we have our hooked fish bar. We take a nice picture of it. We click done. And then it gets submitted to our OCR service, which will extract the vendor, the date, and the amount from it. Uh, and then use that to create a draft expense with the uh, this receipt associated. You can see it's done that, but we still have a few required fields. Uh, most importantly, our expense category. So we select that, a meal in this case, that also sets our payment method. And we also need to set a vendor, so we do that. And uh, once we're done with that, you can see we now have a new expense uh, for fish bar appearing there. Now, obviously another common scenario, if, if we had already imported an expense, is to add a receipt to it, to an existing expense. So we go and do that. You can see pretty much the same process. We select an existing, add a receipt, take a picture of it, we click done, and then we have our receipt added to that pre-existing expense that was imported from a credit card feed. You see now we have a set of expenses that we will be able to submit uh, in an expense report. So in order to do that, we go to our reports tab and uh, we click plus on the draft there and start creating a new, a new expense report. We can give it a name, uh, which we will do here. We can also give it a location and description. Uh, we won't bother this time, but that's some useful information. Then uh, once we click done, we can now click on plus, uh, plus attach expenses. And that will give us the opportunity to either select all unattached expenses or select specific ones, which is what we're going to do in this case. The one we just added a receipt for, the one we captured uh, new from a receipt and one other existing one. And then we're going to click done and uh, that will then go ahead and create our draft expense report for us. And you can see there, there are the three expenses we've chosen. So we can save that draft and you can see it's updated successfully. Okay, so now let's take a closer look at this expense report. So first of all, I just wanted to note that, uh, that if we go and open one of those expenses as an associated receipt, you will indeed see uh, when we open that hook fish bar that the, the receipt is, uh, can be previewed. But let's say also say that uh, this expense is for a billable project and therefore we needed to uh, subsequently hit our project subledger, we built to a customer so we can add more details in order to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is select uh, the, the project that this is in connection with. So we go and select that. And then since this is a billable expense that the customer will be charged for, we make it chargeable. And then finally, in this case, we want to associate it with a specific uh, task number, the word breakdown structure. So we'll put task one here, and then we'll click done. So that uh, project is now not just a regular expense, but is now a project expense. Another thing I just want to point out here is that normal validations apply to, you know, everything that's going on in your expense report here, the same one that would apply in the web UI. So in this case, for example, I'm going to try and edit the amount on a, an imported credit card expense. And you see, it won't let me do that as you would expect because it's been imported from a credit card. So you can't obviously edit the amount. So let's go ahead and uh, click done on that. Okay. Now before we move on to submitting our report, let's take a closer look at policy validation in the expense mobile app. 
So let's start by setting up our scenario. We'll go to expenses and we'll manually create a new expense. We're not going to capture a receipt this time. We're simply going to move on to uh, manually entering the transaction details. So let's put in an amount of $111.36 and then let's add the remainder of our expense details. Expense category and finally our vendor. All right, so you've now got a, a, new, a new unattached expense created here. And now uh, we can actually create a new expense report by using the little picker next to the refresh button and create a new expense report. But in this case, let's go and add it to our existing draft expense report. So let's go back to our draft expense report and open it. And this time we're going to view all expenses and we can click edit. And this and this will now enable us to add the uh, the one expense report which we hadn't yet, which was the paquitos we just manually added. So we'll select that as well and we'll click done. And then we'll save that expense report. Now, uh, I have created a policy validation rule requiring a receipt for any amount over uh, any expense over 80 US dollars. So uh, if I reopen this expense report or if I try to submit it, you can see I now have a policy violation because there, as you'll remember, we didn't attach a receipt. So we'll open it, we'll click on add receipt and we will, instead of taking a picture, we will select an existing receipt, which we, we had already scanned before and we'll attach that. And uh, you can see, actually, we can see the details of the violation if we like there as well. Once we save that expense, you can see our validation error has gone away and we're now able to submit the expense report. So now we'll be queued up for the normal workflow approval process. You can see with that, it disappears from our draft tab and it is now showing up under our in review tab. You will also notice that the expense and receipt that we used are now, lot, now no longer appearing under our unattached receipts and expenses. And that concludes our demo of the Expense Mobile app. So that was a quick overview of the Expense Mobile app. We request customers and partners to try this out and, and kind of provide us feedback. I'll also be providing a link later uh, in, in the resources section that can help provide or submit feedback directly to, uh, to our team. In closing, uh, we would like to leave you with some useful links uh, for your reference. So first, some specific to the content that we have covered, and then some general resources as well. The Mobile Experience Teams channel is a great place to go if you want to exchange tips, ask questions, or submit suggestions for improvement. Teams channel participants include Microsoft Partner, customer experts, and employees as well. And that's the last uh, link that, that you can use. Our Docs website have also been updated with detailed steps. Uh, that you can just follow all along for the successful installation of the app as well. We have included some other useful links uh, from a licensing guide perspective, support options available, and few other areas for your reference. We would also like to remind our, our viewers that uh, Fast Track Team publishes the magazine on a monthly basis, and it includes summary of latest and greatest events, tech talks, summits, and a lot of other information. If you would like to subscribe to the magazine, you can either scan the barcode or use the subscribe button. With that, let's get into the Q&A section and see if you have any questions that we can uh, help answer. So, Rupa, if you want to come off mute and review the questions, if there are any. There are a few questions, so I have already started answering those on the Q&A section. So, to begin with, right, so is this relevant to the system for finance and operation? this particular app. Yes, so as Satish talked about, this particular application is also relevant to the stock scenario or the, you know, uh, for the stock scenario or the other way around, it would be like a financial operation. Yes, this is relevant to deep by finance as well. And uh, next question is, what version of the iOS will this work with? So as Satish mentioned, we are building the new expense mobile on top of the power platform capabilities which means that we will be consuming this application from the Power App so that the application would be supporting both iOS and Android devices wherever there is a Power App support. So the end users would consume this particular application with the uh, Power App that is being installed in the devices. So I have provided a link you know, for more information and also there is a frequently asked questions section also that is added in the top section. Uh, you could refer to that as well. All right, uh, moving to next one. Is there a licensing cost for the OCR functionality? So uh, as a part of the mobile device, we are not using the newer OCR as such, but what we are trying to do is we are leveraging the OCR capabilities that we do have in the existing web application. And the existing web application leverages the form recognizer receipt model service. And 
as we would be utilizing the same one, uh, we do not have any additional cost per se. And is the offline mode planned for the future? If so, help. So unfortunately, we do not have a definitive timeline for the offline mode capability as we are leveraging the power platform behind the scene and as and when the power platform provides the offline capabilities in future, we would be able to leverage that. How do we enter the tax details? So the tax details are entered with respect to the sales tax group and then the item sales tax group and the breakdown within that item sales tax group is configured in the web application. So if the one sales tax group is having a multiple tax code underneath it, and the moment you select that sales tax group, the respective breakdown would happen once the extension line is created and processed for you know reporting. All right, uh, what languages are supported for the OCR add-in? So as of now, we are supporting a few languages. And as I mentioned earlier, we are leveraging the form recognizer service and we are closely collaborating with the form recognizer team to add in more languages. So I will share the link where the supported languages are being provided. I think so we can you know, uh, provide those details. Okay, uh, moving on to the next question. Do the expense rule we have set up in the system flow over or do we have to set them separate for the mobile app? No, so the whole idea is we will leverage the same policy configuration, same workflow configuration, the same dynamic field configuration that we have set up in the web application so that we do not have to uh, redo or you know set up something specific for mobile app. All right, where in D365 can we enable the connection to the mobile app? So there is a detailed documentation, how do we install it? We do not enable it in the sort of a connection in the web application of the finance and operation, but instead what we could do is we would enable the feature in the finance and operation and rest of the configuration is being done on the data side. So there is a detailed link and Satish has already put it out in the presentation. Please leverage those links and the place to you know, set it up in any of the sandbox environment and try it out. Sorry, I could not quite get that part. So the way it works is I believe if you're talking about how do we test the app, so you can install the app in the sandbox environment and validate it through. And then if everything is meeting your requirements and you could install the app in the production environment and do the similar set of configurations. Does the app support attendee list? I believe you were referring to adding guest capability that we have in the Excel management. At this moment, since the, it is in the private review, we are not supporting the adding guest capability, but we do have it in our roadmap and we will add, we will be adding adding guest capability. Okay, can the line property from the activity number uh, default from the activity number or does it have to be entered by user each line? So this goes by the configuration that you would have set it against the activity if it is being set as a default in the web application and the same behavior would work in the a mobile app as well. No need to default, no need to fill it in if it is already defaulted. And will development or customization be similar how you would make changes to the previous app? No, this is totally a different app that is built using the power platform capabilities that's the Canvas Power App. So you would need to you now customize your app in combination with the some part of the X++ on the offender side and with respect to the Power app side changes. Will the app allow for approving expense reports? Yes, not immediately at the moment, but before we are going GA, we would like to bring the approval capabilities as well so that the team members and the managers would be able to approve the expense reports from the mobile app. The receipts are on different language and the different currency. Will the app recognize those language differences? And also about the currency will automatically change to a local currency with the current exchange rate. Unfortunately, we are not recognizing the currency at the moment, again, as we are dependent on the form recognizer service, as if the form recognizer service uses the receipt model and that and when it is sort of a enhancing, it is a sort of a machine learning model that we have and hoping to that would be matured uh, as we are continuing to use. And we are closely working with the, I know, the form recognizer team and uh, hopefully we will get some updates there. Can the app support distribution extended coding of project expenses? Now, unfortunately, I believe you are talking about the splitting the expenses. So uh, we are not supporting the expense splitting in the mobile application at the moment, but what you would be able to do it in the mobile web app. 
However, if you are talking about the itemization, yes, we are working on itemizing the expenses. For example, main expense category is being divided into subcategories, such as you know, hotel category is divided into room brand and then the other aspects. So itemization is being supported. Currently, it is not available for you to test, but that would be available before we go G. Is it ready to be tested in 10 or 30 release and go production or is it still in the beta? So currently this is available for you to test in 10.0.34. But again, considering it is in public review, uh, we would highly encourage you to go with the uh, thorough testing before you put it into a production. But I would highly recommend you reach out to us, maybe Satish or me or Mukesh or even Martin. We could work together if you're thinking to go take it production and we could plan accordingly. Will this app support multiple approval steps, line management, financial approval, etc.? So we are leveraging the same workflow configurations that we have in the web application. So if we have set up your application to be a line manager approval or, you know, the participants approval, whatnot, right? So the way you would configure the similar way it would behave because we are leveraging behind the scenes the same workflow configuration. And will we be able to distinguish expense reports created, submitted via app, web interface, or desktop, looking to understand the compliance uptake of the technology EDC? So unfortunately, no, there is no way for us to distinguish what records have been created from the web app or the mobile app. Can a non-D365 user access the Power App to enter expense? So as this is covered under the team members, so any user who would want to submit an expense, expense they should have uh, access to the existing web application to enter an access. Then only they would be able to utilize the mobile app and enter the expense without having the user configurations or the employee configurations in place. They would not be able to submit the expenses. What is the roadmap for the itemization? So yes, the itemization would be available before we go GA. So our GA timeline at this point of time is in October this year. Awesome. Thank you, Martin, for providing the links and answering from those questions. Uh, those were the pretty much questions that are in the Q&A. There are a couple of other questions that I would like to address. One was very specific to uh, the expense mobile workspace. So that's the previous capabilities that customers have been leveraging in that that is now deprecated and expense mobile app the new that you looked at today is 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 replacing that deprecated expense mobile workspaces when it comes to uh taking another question was taking uh the app into the production environment uh so you, you can definitely reach out to us as Ramapal said uh but prior to reaching out if it has can at least validate that the scenarios have worked for your organization and you have good understanding of how the app is working in your sandbox environment. So we can discuss, you know, what 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 are the next steps of taking this into production environment. The other question that we we typically get is more more from an in-tune control. So Power Apps Mobile is in-tune control, so that those those controls should be applicable to to this mobile app as well. With that, thank you, thank you so much for attending today's Tech Talk. With that, I'll hand it over back to Lalita. Thank you, Satish. I have posted a link to our short survey in the Q&A panel. We would love to hear your feedback on today's session and hear what you would like to see in the future events. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be made available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page in coming weeks. I would like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and to the audience who joined us today.